What's up guys? Welcome back to HMHT. My name is Ben, your host of course. And finally, today, we get a long-awaited update. Macos Pixel 11.3 release candidate. It's the update that we have today and I'm going to be telling you that this update is packed before we even dive in. So brace yourself for a ton of new features and changes. Let's get into the video. Now for me on my 2016 15 inch MBP, the update size came in at exactly 2.9 gigs and I'm actually updating from macOS Pixel 11.3 beta 7. If you're coming from a different version, then definitely your update size is going to be larger than that, especially if it's an older version. And also if we go to see the about this mark section to see the build number, for this time around, we have to click on version in order for us to see the build number. And as you can see there, the build number is 20E232, depicting a build number that is more like a final build. If nothing else comes out, then this is what you're going to see when this update officially comes out. And if we go to see the system, how much it's taken up, you can see that system here is taking up 16.51 gig, which is more or less the same is what it was taking on beta 7. Now let's get into the segment that is my favorite and that most people like, that is the new features and changes that came with macOS Pixel 11.3. The first one that you're going to notice is during the update process, there's already changes even from the update page. So the update time has actually been shortened. So it now takes a shorter period compared to what it would take on 11.2 to download macOS Pixel 11.3. However, I got to point out that the preparation time that it takes to prepare after it has downloaded the update before it reboots is more or less the same. It has managed to keep a consistency of about 15 minutes. I believe in future this can be improved but there is an improvement when it comes to downloading the update and the time it takes for your Mac to basically power cycle until you are able to use it. Now, that's the first new change that is there with this update. If we go to the About This Mac section and go under Support, we have a new menu and also more options here. And you can basically see the warranty coverage of your Macs. Now, for me, as you can see, my warranty coverage is actually expired. So you can see that it just says expired, but if yours is still valid and you have Apple Care Plus or you have limited warranty, you'll be able to see when that is going to expire under the Apple logo here and if yours is expired or for some reason you want to get information when it comes to repairs and services you just click on details here and it will automatically give you this pop-up in Safari where you have to log in using your Apple ID and you actually be able to get information if your Mac has a fingerprint you can log in just using your fingerprint talk about convenience. This is so convenient. And also the other option that we have under the support page, I want to sign in here. So you can see that we have chat and phone support. So if you click there where it says get support, you can see the the, the menu or the Safari page that loads up and you just basically have to select the issue that bets describes the issue that you are experiencing on your Mac and you'll be able to get a phone call or chat with Apple support. If you want to buy a used Mac, I'm sure this is a page that you should be utilizing fully now that it's available on macOS Pixel 11.3. The other change that came with this update has to do with gaming. So if you are a gamer and you have the Sony PlayStation 5 and you also have the new Xbox Series S or Series X controllers, wireless controllers, I'll be happy to let you know that with this macOS Pixel 11.3, they are actually supported and you can connect to them wirelessly and this just goes to sort of show us that perhaps Apple is taking gaming a little bit serious 
or in future they might introduce maybe hardware that sort of complements Apple Arcade to give it a better gaming experience but with this update just know that those devices are supported. If you have two HomePod stereos in your house and you bring them closer you can actually go into your Bluetooth settings and connect to them as a single Bluetooth device and once you've basically connected to uh, the HomePods they become a stereo pair so they no longer are just one speaker but they are two in one if that makes sense so you can put one speaker like on the left hand side one on the right hand side and they get that stereo sound or if you have more stereo speakers you can put one in each of the four corners if you have more you put one above one below and you get a complete 360 surround sound with just using Apple um, home pods which is amazing it's now supported with Mac OS Pixel 11.3. If you have the Apple Silicon M1 Mac you now get dedicated preference for touch alternative for iOS and iPadOS apps on Apple Silicon M1 Macs so this is an Intel Mac I won't be able to show you much this is how it basically will look like for certain applications and softwares that um, have been added to this. If you set it up, you can sort of press like, for example, if you set your directional arrows like for an action like scrolling, you'll be able to press like the right arrow and it will be able to like perform a similar task that will be equivalent to scrolling up, scrolling down, depending on the keys that you set to, which is a good thing. And now let's talk about an Apple app that has sort of been updated greatly when it comes to Mac OS Pixel 11.2, and that is Safari. So it has actually added support for WebM videos. So if you go on the internet and search for WebM videos, you'll be able to see the type of videos they are and the format they use. So before, on 11.2 or 11.1 they were not supported but here on Mac OS Pixel 11.3 WebM videos are now supported on Safari. If you open Safari and go to the preferences right there and click where it says preferences and go to privacy you see that we have an option to actually um, prevent cross-site tracking so if applications want to track you across different websites they'll actually have to request for your permission in order to do this so it leads to better security and also better uh, privacy in this case now also with Safari it's been updated with more options to customize Safari on the start page and also when you create a new tab or new page you can sort of add extensions so if you open a new page or new tab it will open up according to the extension that you have set up and if you're a developer and you have a website or something you're working on you can actually input voice commands to your websites. This is deep programming. It's not something that I'll get into uh, myself, but if you're a developer, it's finally here with Safari. And overly, Safari had issues before where it was crashing, where it was refreshing nonstop. But finally, for me, at least as far as I'm concerned, it feels better and it leads to better security and also a lot of bugs have been addressed. So that is Safari for you. If we go to the news app in Mac, you can see that we have News Plus there and under News Plus, you can discover more tabs as you can see here. So we have the For You section here that sort of tries to give you or recommend things that uh, more like what you like or what you like to read so it takes into account the publication magazines or newspapers or also organizations that you like to follow on the news app and tries to recommend similar publications and articles that you might be interested into. So that is the news app, it's been updated. You can see that you have saved stories, you can see your history right there, but on saved stories, you can manage downloads. And also if you go to the plus or today, you can see what is trending according to what you like today and according to what you said. And you can see series suggestions here, like according to different categories, foods, 
science, travel, and so on. And in the News Plus, you can see that you can uh, go to featured, you can see different newspapers. For example, you can see Wall Street Journal, you can see Los Angeles Times, you can see many more uh, newspapers here, and you can see like business category you can see the featured ones these are the star ones and also if you scroll here you'll be able to see entertainment you'll be able to see food fitness you'll be able to see hobbies basically there is so much more that you can do and you can actually follow different articles by just clicking the follow there and if you click on the three dots there you can see that you can sort by featured or you can sort by name so in all these categories you can sort according to what you like and also if you go to the for you like i mentioned it's customized for you to try and give you a better user experience and get you to read a little bit more and become a little bit wiser privacy and security those two things apple has been talking about for a long time and with mac os pixel 11.3 iOS 14.5, watchOS 7.4, privacy has been enhanced a little bit. Like I mentioned, you saw how Safari has been updated, but now in the App Store, Mac App Store, Watch App Store, iOS App Store, applications and developers are now mandated to provide their uh, privacy practices and also to request permission when they want to track you across different websites, different applications, or basically if they want to track you in other apps. I know this is not something that Facebook will be happy about, but hey, privacy is something that is very, very, very important. The Apple Music app has also been updated. When you open it for the first time, you will see a Listen Now tab. This is more like the For You tab in uh, News Plus and also in the podcast app. You can see that once you click here, it will sort of recommend a For You section here and you can see your account here. So if you go to, let's just go to the browse section and I'll show you some of the things that you can see. So you can see that you can share Relix or play a song to see the relix here. And once you play a song that has relix, you can actually share the relix either in messages on WhatsApp or on any platform that you would like to share the relix to. If we go to the browse section and select a specific album and click on the three dots there, you can see that we can add it to a playlist. We can play it next, we can play it later or queue it, add it to a lineup, or we can create a station and we can sort of share it if we like. So this is something that is new. And basically also continuous playing is added to the Apple Music app. This means that if you are an Apple Music subscriber, I use Spotify mainly for my music. So this is not something that I'll be able to show you extensively, but you'll be able to get like an infinity logo here in the top corner when you are playing your music. It will allow you to add autoplay to the music app. And this means that if you had a specific album, a single tune or an artist that you are listening to and the track comes to an end, instead of just going silent after that ends or the album ends, it will play recommended artists like more for you, you know, it's trying to make it more uh, customized for you. So it will play similar artists with similar songs or similar albums to try and give you more recommendations for you for you, for you. So they're trying to get you to listen a little bit more and give you that continuous music flow. News, podcast, music. Now let's talk about reminders cause the reminders app has also been updated. Now, the first time when you open your reminders app, you'll be welcomed by a new splash screen that will tell you what's new in reminders. And let's just open it up so that I show you. So you have the ability to sort by manual, you have the ability to sort by due date, creation date, priority, and you can also sort by the title. And you can also do this in ascending or descending order, depending to what you want. And also the reminders app gives you the ability to print off your reminders and create a to-do list in the real world. So if you wanna walk around holding your reminders or just, you know, if you have a check 
checklist that you want to do in your reminders you can print it off and do it in real life and not on the device should you wish to so this has been updated extensively now let's talk about podcast because the podcast app has also been updated so the moment you open it up for the first time you're going to see a new splash screen and it will tell you what's new in podcast and that just like listen now or the for you section we have in the news app podcast has also something that is very similar so you have a listen now section and it shows what you have and it you can see all that you have here and you can sort of see um, a save individual podcast by just clicking there and you see that podcast is safe and just to show you some of the prominent settings that we have here if you click where it says podcast and go to preferences and here you can see under general you have automatic downloads where your podcast will download automatically you have playback and you have continuous playback where it says play the next episode when an episode ends or you can stop when an episode ends so it's trying to give you that continuous listening just like what they did to the music app but that's not all if you continue with the app you can see that you can select if forward goes by 30 seconds if it goes by 15 or 10 or even more or the same also when it comes to back how back do you want to go and if you go to advanced you can see that we have more prominent settings for library we can sync we can sync follows across devices or automatically delete played episode show series suggestion and download episodes when saving so that has been updated and if we go to the browse section there you'll be able to see the different categories that we have here and as you can see this has been updated and if you click on the three dots here you can see what's playing next and that is good and if we go to where it says downloads you can see the download app downloaded episodes or podcasts that you have that is podcast there's a lot more but this seems to be more focused into making it a customized for you now let's talk about siri because siri has been updated greatly now on the apple watch and on the iphone you can actually use siri to call emergency services but on the mac let's try and see call emergency services i'm sorry I can't call emergency services here. Please so, use your phone. So Siri on the Mac cannot call emergency services even though they are paid. It cannot yet do that, but Siri can do a lot more with Mac OS Pixel 11.3. So if we go into our system preferences and go to where it says Siri right there, you can see that we have more Siri voices within Siri here so as you can see this is voice variety we are under American as you can see and instead of just saying male and female those were the options that we had before you can see that we have voice one to voice four so this is how voice one sounds let's just click on it hi I'm Siri choose the voice you'd like me to use and then this is voice two hi I'm Siri choose the voice you'd like me to use and then this is voice three hi I'm Siri Choose the voice you'd like me to use. And then this is voice four. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Okay, so as you can see, those are more realistic voices that we have in Siri. And if we select another region, for example, African, so we'll go to South Africa. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. So that is voice two under South African, and you can hear voice one. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. So that sounds like Afrikaans. What can I say? Like me as a belief. So, anyways, Siri has been updated, and you get the idea, right? So it now gives you more natural sounding voices instead of just having male and female. You can actually see different Siri voices, and it's interesting that Steve Moser. Uh, over on Twitter, he was actually able to find audio files that correspond to these. So these are not just called voice one, voice two, voice three. They actually have names in the source code of Marquez Pixel 11.3. So there you'll be able to see as you are seeing here, these are the American voices that you are seeing there. So voice one, you can see the name, voice two, you can see the name associated to it, and voice three as well as voice four, you can see the associated name. So Siri, 
is doing more and something that's here again with siri it's been updated to tell us when wwdc 2021 is going to be this year's wwdc so if we ask siri when it's going to be they will tell us so let's go ahead when is wwdc 2021 Apple's 2021 Worldwide Developers Conference will be held online starting June 7th. You can get all the details at apple.com. Okay, so that is what Siri tells us and that is correct. So this year's WWDC is going to take place June 7th to 11th of uh, 2021. So now Siri can tell you uh, about the WWDC date. If your region isn't yet updated, then keep an eye out for this because I know they first started with the States, then I believe UK and then Canada. So it's something that's rolling out to different uh, regions at different times as I talk right now. Now, also with Siri, you'll be able to notice that he is now he, why am I so gender biased when it comes to Siri? So with Siri, you'll be able to notice that Siri is able to um, execute commands a little bit better. The latency time has sort of been improved and also uh, the information they give is more accurate. So that is Siri for you. And it's great to see that Siri keeps getting better and better. You have a friend in Siri. If you ever feel lonely, just remember that. When it comes to new emojis, with Mac OS Pixel 11.3, we have about 270 new emojis. When you, if you see some of the new emojis that we have, we have, for example, a burning heart. We have an updated needle because while well, people, I guess, are getting a lot of those, we have the AirPods masks logo. And all in all, we have about 217 new emojis. And Apple did this in order to add support for Unicode 13.1. So this is available on the Mac. It's available on the Apple Watch and also on the iPhone, this is something that you're going to see. So if you send someone an emoji while using your iPhone, you'll be able to see the same emoji, be it if it's an iMessage, you'll be able to see it supported on the Mac and on the Apple Watch. It won't be like an XX, something that isn't supported. So the format has been updated and it's support for Unicode 13.1 across all devices. So irregardless of what device you use, you'll be able to see these updates. Also, again, something that I would like to highlight, this is something that was mentioned in the code and I can't fully show you because I use an Intel Mac. I'm waiting for M1X because when it comes out, beast mode. If you have optimized charging on and you have a calendar event in your calendar and you have set a time to leave, your Mac will basically try to make sure that the Mac is charged to 100% before your scheduled event. So what optimized charging does, it tries to stop your Mac from charging to 100% so that your battery doesn't uh, heat up. And also the higher you charge, the more temperature and also it, it's not good for your battery. So optimized charging tries to keep your battery somewhere between 80 to about 90% and that in the long run prolongs the lifetime of your battery. But on Apple Silicon M1 Max, if you have a calendar event that you've set and you have a time to leave, then it will sort of make sure that at least 30 minutes before you leave for your scheduled event, your battery will be charged to 100% so that you can have enough charge to who knows what, wherever you're going to do or what meeting you're going to. So this is something that isn't here fully, but for Apple Silicon M1 Max, it's something that could be coming pretty soon. Calendar snooze options have also been improved on 11.3. So we now have five minutes, we have 15 minutes, 30 minutes and one minute. And just in case you wanna shuffle things around or move things around, reminders can be moved manually by drag and drop. Now, this is a change, but it's on the sad note because when it comes to macOS Pixel 11.3, when you update, depending on your region, Rosetta could be uninstalled or unsupported or removed in your region. So this is something that Apple has mentioned that Rosetta could be removed based on regions. If you are in a selected region and you use Rosetta, it will be automatically uninstalled. So if you use uh, Windows X86 uh, applications, then 
I would recommend that before you update, you check the apps and softwares that you use, whether they are now supported on Apple Silicon Macs before you make the transition, because Rosetta could be unsupported in your region. Now, again, speaking of uh, gaming, this update has been updated to give a better emulation and layout for developers so that if they want to emulate for iPhone and iPad OS apps on Apple Silicon M1 Max, this update makes it easier for them. So this means that uh, common game controller buttons can be mapped to keys and mouse button. For example, as you are seeing here, this is like an example of an Xbox X because it uses the X and you can see that X can be mapped to a button like Q and so on and the directional arrows can be mapped to like W, S, A, D and all the directional arrows that we have on the map. Now with this update being officially released and Apple Silicon M1 Max being out for a number of months now, the Apple Developer Transition Kit is no longer supported. So if you receive the little uh, I believe Mac mini device that Apple was giving to developers for the transition period, that is no longer uh, supported and you should be looking forward to returning it back to Apple. Now, another app that has been updated with macOS Pixel 11.3 has to do with maps. So for certain specific selected regions, tourist attraction centers and airports, I know in Canada we have a ton of airports, but at the moment, because of COVID, you can only fly into like uh, six or I believe eight, six or eight airports. And those are the major ones. So if you search up any of the major airports that we have in Canada, you'll be able to see the update that you are seeing here. And if you go there, for example, we search for YVR, you notice the pop up that comes up and you can see that we have COVID-19 information. And it says at this airport, passengers are required to wear face coverings and practice physical distancing. Passengers may also be required to quarantine on arrival and pass a health test on screening. Only passengers and authorized personnel may enter any part of the airport. This is crucial information that Apple has added here. So before you travel to any major destination, then I would advise that you first of all, check out in the Apple Maps app to see whether this has been updated. It will be able to help you to see whether, first of all, you'll be able to enter. Like for example, the airport, it only says crucial passengers or authorized personnel will be allowed. And also it will be able to show you whether you need like a face mask or covering and what protocols you need to follow when you get there and again that's not all this is something that's rolling out so don't get mad if you don't see this and it has to do with COVID-19 testing centers so maps has been updated for certain countries and regions to depict or show COVID-19 centers. So you can ask Siri, where can I get a COVID-19 vaccine? And Siri will be able to tell you, or you can search up manually in maps COVID-19 vaccination centers and you see and you'll be able to see the one closest or nearest to your destination and if you want to go and get the vaccine and also i believe you'll be able to get a link to the site where you can get a booking which is something that's crucial and important and it's good to see that on macOS pixel 11.3 that is finally here I'm almost done with maps, so just hang in there. And the last thing that I would like to mention has to do with cyclists. If you like to cycle around, then I'll be happy to let you know that for San Diego and Portland, you now get cycling directions within the Apple Maps app. And you also be able to see elevations and whatever the terrain will look like within the Apple Maps app for those region if you are cyclist. So that is good forward we go with fitness i guess now i'm done with maps we've talked about maps so much now let's talk about the find my application because it's been updated within macOS pixel 11.3 so you can now track different items and by different items i mean like bags bicycles tablets you can track your homework you can track your school bag you can track a lot of things but unfortunately the icons don't show here like they show on ios 14.5 but you can track different items if i don't want to lose myself guess what put an air tag on myself and then track 
myself. So this update unlocks the possibility for that. Now you've been hanging in there for quite some time now and just give me one more chance and I'll be done with the new features and changes. And the last thing that I would like to mention with this update has to do with weather app. So if you use either the widget or you manually go into the app, I'll be happy to let you know that you finally get hourly weather precipitation for the United Kingdom. So more regions are being added. If you don't see hourly precipitation for your country, city or region, then give it some time as this is something that is being rolled out a little bit. Other than that, thank you so much for hanging in this for this update. I know I try to cover most of the new features and changes that I'm aware myself. If I find any new more features of which there is likely going to be more new features and changes and also just overall user experience with the update itself like bugs, battery performance, you know, Geekbench scores, I'll be covering those soon in another video. So make sure you stick around and if you found this video informative in a way then a sub i think will be i think will be just fine yeah thank you so much stay safe and i'll see you in the next video very soon peace that was long that was long